paying your dues. Lights were flashing, and the base was thumping in the docks district that night. Every bar and club that had been shuttered up for weeks during the protest was now open, with credits pouring in, and liquor pouring out. The company had blinked, and the dockers had their union, and they'd all been given their back pay. And standing alongside them, going shot for shot, were their brothers and sisters from the Harriers Guild who, as far as the district was concerned, drank for free that night. Bets were being placed at a corner table where a massive brute in faded fatigues clasped hands with a younger man who was almost as large. Their knuckles cracked and their biceps flexed as they each got ready. When someone shouted go, each strained at the other, teeth bared and muscles bulging. It was touch and go for a time, with one of them gaining the upper hand, then losing it. But as the seconds dragged on, it was the docker whose hand dipped closer and closer to the tabletop. Then, with a final strain, the mercenary pushed his opponent's hand down flat with a sharp slap of flesh against the scarred plastine. There were cheers and groans as tokens changed hands and wagers were settled. Hadrian, the gunlugger who'd been making a spectacle of himself most of the night, slapped the docker on the shoulder and gave him a grin. Not bad, Hadrian said, picking up a bottle and pouring a drink for each of them. What are you running under that skin tone? Nobody puts up a fight like that with just vitamins and gym reps. You first, the docker said, picking up his glass and taking a swig. Hadrian grinned and flexed his fist. Even over the bass and the raucous shouts in the bar, there was a slow whine that could be heard from his hand. Got a pair of ape hangers in my mitts for extra grip strength. Set of mule backs in each arm, along with an anchor plate in my bones. Got fitted with an aftermarket Titan inhibitor too, but that's more for showing rather than growing, you know what I'm saying? The docker nodded, then rolled up his sleeve. His arm was a patchwork of scars, and some surgical, and others acquired the hard way. The skin looked stretched, as if the muscle underneath had grown too big to be contained. A few years back I got caught in a jackfall, he said, leaning over the table. Shouldn't have happened, but as you probably noticed, corporate wasn't all that concerned about workers' safety. I managed to keep the arm and the company rep shelled out just enough to keep me quiet about them cutting corners. Got a nest of synth coils in there to replace the muscle I lost, and they added a bearing joint to keep it stable. Helps that I can lock it in place when I want to. Adrian slugged back his own drink and grinned. Then he frowned, glanced off into the crowd. He touched his ear and said, Yeah, I'm on it. What's up? The docker asked. Trouble, Hadrian said. You want to help? Sure, his arm wrestling companion said, getting to his feet. Hadrian slung an arm around the younger man's shoulders and walked off into the crowd with him. The two of them stumbled into the light and sound of the bar, cutting a swath of annoyed patrons and revelers. Shouts and rude gestures followed in their wake, but neither of them so much as turned to look. What are we doing? the docker asked. We got a tip there's going to be a hit on Cortez, Hadrian said, trying not to shout the name of the union rep who'd led the protest for better conditions and official recognition. Corporate wants to send a message. What? The young man said, incredulity slowly turning to anger. But it's over. They signed the agreement. Hadrian shook his head slowly, back and forth. They can't undo the contract. What they can do is make a statement that rising above your place comes with consequences. I've been on jobs like this before, and they almost always try something like this. Where? The docker asked. Right there, at the bar, Hadrian said. Faded blue jacket, watch cat push back on his head. Let's go say hello, the docker said. Adrian grinned, and the two of them pushed their way to the drinks station. The man in question was leaning over a fizzing red glass, his eyes wandering over the mirror behind the bar as he watched the reflection of the crowd. 
He was average height, average build, dressed in average clothes, with a face that would vanish into obscurity as soon as you took your eyes off of it. Nothing about him stood out, which was exactly what made him stand out at a revel like this. Hadrian and his companion parted, each coming in on either side of the lone drinker, hemming him in. What are you having? The docker asked, putting an arm over the man's shoulders. Piss off, he snarled, trying to shrug the arm off. He may as well have tried lifting a shuttle with his bare hands. That ain't very sociable, Hadrian said, chuckling. The man's eyes slid from Hadrian to his companion and back again. Then he glanced up at the mirror. Eric Cortez, the man who'd been at the forefront of the Dockers' unionization efforts, stood up on a table and waved his hand to get people's attention. That was when everything happened all at once. In a single motion, the target scooped up his drink and threw it toward Hadrian's face, trying to push off from the rail under the bar. He threw up an elbow as well, but instead of catching the Docker in the face, the young man grabbed the drinker's forearm and bent his arm behind his own back. There was a muffled thump, and then the man's chest exploded in a shower of blood and fractured bone. The dock hand jumped back, letting go of the body. The would-be assassin flopped onto the ground. There was a neat hole in the palm of one of his fingerless gloves, showing where his palm pistol had gone off and shot him in the back during the struggle. It was a big caliber, too, judging by the damage it had done. Not bad, kid. Hadrian said, wiping the cranberry fizz off his face. What's your name? Torg, the sandy-haired docker said. Well, I know you just got your contract approved, but if you're looking for a sidestep, I'll be your sponsor for the Harriers. <laughs>